Okay, in this video, I'd like to talk to you about the electronic energy, or the total energy in a system due to electrons. And I'm going to tell you that this is also called the enthalpy, which we give the, the, the variable capital H. So, this video leads on from a couple of other ones. It leads on from the chemical potential. It leads on from uh, when I worked out the occupancy, or the density of states in energy space. And I, I use this, uh, this is one of the, the uh, forms of it. And... It leads on from another video I did, I think I'm going to call it maybe the um, the density of states occupancy or something along those lines, the number density, density of states occupancy. I think that's a very good video, and you, or well a very useful video, I'm not going <laughs> to, I suppose I can't really critique myself, but I think it would be useful to watch that before you watch this. But I suppose a very quick synopsis of that video is the following, that if we say that the number, of, the number density, that is the, the number of states per unit volume, it's the same as mass density. The number of uh, the amount of mass per unit volume is the exact same thing. All right. The occupancy is the amount is the probability of something being occupied. So in a football stadium, for example, you would have the de you would have we'll say you might have rho of p, the density of people. You might say okay, and if you knew the density of people and you knew the occupancy, which I'm going to say f of p, the probability of a seat being occupied, you'd be able to get the number of people, the probability or the number of people per unit volume, which I might call the number density, n of p. So the number density, the amount of people per unit volume, would be the density of people per unit volume multiplied by the probability of a, a state being occupied. Okay? So you might say it's the density of states multiplied by the occupancy is the the number density and of course if you integrate the number density from all the people that are there you're going to get the number of people so if, if it's same as mass if you know the density and if you multiply it by it will say the total area or the total volume you're going to get the mass so this is the same this is the same concept here and finally let's say that each person carried money and you want to find the total money in your stadium well you first of all have to find out how many people are in your stadium and we know that's N of P D P uh, oh, is there something I'm missing here sorry there is uh, oh yeah that, that is correct N of P D P that's the number of people in your stadium but each person's carrying a piece uh, say um, each person's carrying energy or sorry energy money so let's multiply it by all the money in the stadium like that that's going to be money. The money carried by one person multiplied by the, the number density of the people integrated the whole thing so it's going to give you the, the total number of people. So what if you want to find the energy in a system? You'd integrate the number density the sorry the, the number density multiplied by the energy so this is the amount of energy per unit volume well you integrate it across the into total thing to get the total energy. But we know that the number density can also be written as the density of states times the occupancy of states. And then we need to multiply by the energy per volume. And then we integrate it across all the volume to get your energy, the total energy. All right, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. So bear with me now. Okay, and I'm going to do this pretty quickly. It involves the Sommerfeld expansion. And I see I'm actually going to run out of time. Uh, wait, no, I don't. I'm not going to run out of time. So, let's go ahead and do this. So, we need to set up the following integral. I'm going to say the h is equal to 3n over twice e Fermi to 3 over 2. And then we have our integral. Negative to positive infinity. And we're going to have the square root of e. We're going to have e. We're going to have de divided by our occupancy. So, that's going to be e to the e minus mu over kt plus 1, like this. And I'm going to tell you that we're going to look for a Sommerfeld expansion. So very quickly, to write down the Sommerfeld expansion, it's the following. It's for doing really complicated integrals, okay? So we have an integral of the following form. Uh, e to the x, so x, that's an e, plus 1 is equal to x0 l plus 1 over l plus 1 outside of 1 plus pi squared L outside of L plus 1 divided by 6 times x0 squared. That's the Sommerfeld expansion. So in this case we look 
e times e, that's going to get um, e to the 3 over 2. So L is going to be 3 over 2. Uh, our x is going to be e over kt, and our x0 is going to be mu over kt. And everything else is grand. Now the thing is though, if we let x equal to e over kt, then dx dE is equal to 1 over kt, or you could say that dE is equal to kt dx, so this, or dx. So this is our scaling factor. Um, yeah, or you might have pull, pulled that across like that, I suppose. Uh, no, yeah, sorry, that, that is correct. That's our scaling factor. So every time we replace dE, we must multiply by kt, and every time we replace e, we must multiply by kt. So look, I'm sure you're well able to do that, so I'm just going to really put down the answer. Okay, so do our Sommerfeld expansion by putting in all the uh, substitutions I just mentioned to you, and you're going to get the following. You're going to get that enthalpy h is equal to 3n times mu to the 5 over 2, divided by 5 times e fermi to the 3 over 2, multiplied by mu over kt, that's going to be uh, to the 5 over 2, then we're going to have 2 fifths outside of 1 plus 15 pi squared over 24 multiplied by kt to b squared uh, divided by mu squared. Now this looks pretty hairy and it is pretty hairy in terms of algebra but that's about it. Okay, so we can, we can we'll say multiply this out because we have two terms here and you're going to get the following. And I'm, I want to do this very quickly because I don't want to run out of time on my video. Okay, three-fifths n to the mu the half pi squared kt squared divided by e far to the 3 over 2. Now, the thing is, in a previous video, the video on chemical potential, I got an expression for mu over EF, mu over EF, and I had the expression as, let me see here, 1 minus pi squared over 12, and we had 1 over pi squared over 12, kt over mu to be squared. So what I'm going to do basically is try and get a mu over EF, so look we have a mu to the 5 over 2, EF to the 5 over 2, if I multiply above and below by E Fermi, I'm going to get basically an E Fermi to the 5 over 2. And I'm going to use this expansion, or use this, uh, use this expression here. Okay, so let's do that. I'm just going to just write down the answer. Uh, oh, by the way, in this term here, because this is very small, I'm going to basically write down that, um, I'm going to say that the chemical potential is approximately E Fermi. You can make that substitution straight out. So just looking at this alone, I make the substitution that mu over EF to the 5 over 2 is equal to the is equal to um, uh, 1 over 1 minus pi squared over 12 kt over mu to be squared all to the 5 over 2. All right, so we're going to get the following: 3n e fermi divided by 5 minus n times e fermi times pi squared k squared t squared divided by 8 mu squared. And then we had the other term, which was 3 over 8 n pi squared k squared t squared over e fermi. And lastly, uh, oh yeah, sorry, what I should have said to you there was we had um, our 5 over 2 on top, so I applied a Taylor expansion, and very quickly what that was, if you have, two, if you have a minus b, we'll say to the c, and c is small, it becomes a minus c times b. And I did that, so I brought say if we had a minus b to the 5 over 2, that becomes a minus b, a minus b times 5 over 2, like that, and I applied that in here. Alright, so now that we have our three terms like this, I'm going to make the next substitution that mu across the board is approximately e fermi, and you can do that because this term is quite small, and you can only do it now having made that substitution. It's a bit of a roundabout way of doing it, but that's the way we do it. And if you do that, you realize that this becomes E Fermi squared. And we had an E Fermi up here, so there's an E Fermi on the bottom. And you realize these two essentially are the same. Okay, so you can just basically add the two of those, and you finally get the enthalpy is equal to 3 times n times E Fermi divided by 5 plus n pi squared kt to be squared 
divided by 4e Fermi. Okay, now I know I rushed through that, but uh, the steps, I definitely, <laughs> I'd like to think I explained the steps anyway. So, yeah, that's the correct answer there. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please fire them my way. Uh, please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.